Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hey y'all and welcome to Straight Up with MS and all its crazy little circles here on MS and Me Radio brought to you by the MS Global Support Network. I'm your host, Patty Long, and you can find me on Twitter at MS and It for Life and I spell that M S E N I T the number 4 L I F E. And, you know, MS is the craziest, craziest thing because your central nervous system is in charge of everything about you. So when your central nervous system is all out of whack, well, you're all out of whack. And we do our best to to get it together. And if we have a really good doctor who listens to us, then they can um, really help us to be our best. So I encourage you, I encourage everybody to find a doctor who specializes in MS, who knows MS, who believes in you and the power that is within you to be your best. And, you know, I've made statements in the past that about me, you know, I refused a wheelchair. I told y'all that a couple of weeks ago. And I refused it because I had no arms. I had no life. Even when I was pushed in a chair. Even when I was being pushed. And they weren't going that fast. It felt like I was going 100 miles an hour. And they were making me all dizzy. And you, I couldn't see anything. My eyes couldn't keep up. You know, it was a mess. A disaster. So I refused the chair because it wasn't right for me, you know, with no arms and no legs and my core disappearing and my vision all screwed and all dizzy, there had to be a better way. And I found a better way for me. But that doesn't mean that it would be wrong for you because a lot of people out there, and I saw this online and I I tweeted about it, but... I don't know if I if I actually retweeted the video, which I should have, but it was so cool and I am so proud of this girl and I cannot remember her name and that's frustrating too because my memory's like poof out the window. But she has a wheelchair that she can walk behind and push like it's a walker to help stabilize her so she can walk. And then when she gets tired, then she can sit down and she has the chair. And I think that is the most awesome thing. And in that post, she also said that it's really hurtful when she hears people say, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Well, I kind of agree with that, even though I use that phrase, because I don't mean it in that particular way. When I tell people, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's in reference to you got to try and use it. You've got to go to therapy. You've, you've got to do these things t- for yourself. Like this lady with the walker wheelchair. Well, it was a wheelchair that she used like a walker because she could push behind it. And, um, you know... That is using it, people. That is using it. That is not losing it. That is using it. And I, I don't want to be misunderstood there because, um, I, I feel like with MS, if you don't use it, you lose it faster. But everybody, I mean, everybody in the world, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's true for everybody. I mean, you, you think about it like this. If you take, a runner, maybe, you know, a really good runner who runs 10 miles a day and then you plop them down on a couch for a month and a half 
do you really think they're going to be able to get up and run 10 miles just because they could before after plopping down on a couch for a month and a half? I really doubt it. You know, it just, it, it doesn't work that way. And I know this from my own experiences prior to MS because of injuries that had me plopped on a couch, you know, and you couldn't just pick up exactly where you were and start again. You had to start from a lower level and maybe run a mile or, or whatever instead of that 10. And that was when everything about me worked, you know. So now it it just happens quicker. So I popped down on a couch for, you know, a week and I've gone backwards as far as my lasting ability. I've gone backwards as far as my um, my balance is concerned because I do balance exercises, but that's not to say that I go back to scratch because I've plopped down on a couch for a little while because that doesn't happen. I don't lose my legs again. I don't lose my arms again just from sitting around doing nothing. But what I do lose is that extra ability that I get from exercise, you know, and there's a lot of things that even people that are not walking can do that are exercise. And um, exercise, I will say again, does not have to be boring. It does not have to be so strenuous that you can't do anything for the next three days. As a matter of fact, you don't want that. You want to do just little bursts so that you're not depleting all your energy, which is what this lady online was doing. She would walk behind the chair, and when she got to a certain point, she would stop walking, and she would sit down and use her chair as a chair. And, I mean, that was the most amazing video that I have seen in quite a while. And it, ama it, it was amazing to me because... She was making the point, she was making the point now of how helpful a chair can be to people. And I do not disagree at all. And it would be a great assistive device for a lot of people. Just don't look at it as having to be permanent. Because if you do like this lady's doing, and you get up and you walk as you can, and then you sit and you use it as a chair, and then when you're rested, you get up and you try and walk again. That is using it, people. That is using it, using it, using it. And you will get stronger for using it. And um, I have, I know I have turned quite a few people on to free pedaling, as I call it, where you use the floor pedals. And the floor pedals help because your knees, your thighs, your knees, your ankles, your feet, everything is working together. Your hips, I forgot them, but they're all working together in the same motion that you would use to walk. So, um, and it, it, and after you've gotten started on it, hopefully you'll get hooked on it like I did because that was, you know, and that was partially because of the game that I was playing. Zombies Run is really encouraging in that, in that fashion. And, you know, you go a little bit slower and then you go a little faster because you start getting chased by a zombie, right? Um, and I, it took me, gosh, it took me six, eight months before I got chased by a zombie because you have to be going at a certain speed. And I was pedaling, not walking or running, so I had my phone strapped to my leg. And because that phone, even though it only weighs a few ounces, it weighs a few ounces, I had to strap it to one leg and then the next day strap it to the other leg so that each leg got the evenness of the extra weight. And it it gave me more energy. It gave me more lasting ability. It helped me defeat, and let me say that again, it helped me to defeat the exhaustion that I was having at the time because I was asleep more hours than I was awake. At best, I was awake for eight hours back then. And, you know, we don't want an eight-hour awake day. We want an eight-hour sleep, but we don't want eight hours of our day to only be what we're awake for. And 
some of the medications I had taken made me sleep even more, you know, and so I, I was very defiant um, when it came to all of this stuff, and I had a doctor in the beginning that just plain didn't believe me. So now I've got a doctor who knows MS and who believes in me, and yet we've had a miscommunication of some kind, and I don't know. It's probably my fault because I'm not always the best at getting my point across. You know, sometimes things are said that um, somebody else jumps to a conclusion, and that's not really what I meant, you know. Um, so I had told my doc that I get excited, you know, like a happy excited really easily, and I love that. I do, because I need it. I need that childlike quality of excitement when I get something accomplished that I haven't been able to do before, or just because I've accomplished it and it's a rough day, or just because I accomplished all these different tasks, you know, and on my list, I have everything split into the tiniest little details that I can possibly break them into. So it's not clean the kitchen. It's put the dirty dishes in the dishwasher, put the clean dishes back in the cabinet, you know, because sometimes you get more stuff out than what you need, or you have them sitting in the drain board after you've washed by hand. So I'll have all these little details written down. So when I look at the end of the day at my list, I can be proud of all those things that I marked off. And so what if I didn't mark them all off? You know, so what if I didn't get them all done? I got all these done, and that's wonderful and amazing. And, yes, I need my excitement for that. And I need my anger, too, because my anger allows me to work out harder. I use the emotions that I have, whatever emotion it is, and I put it somewhere healthy, you know, and working out when you're angry because anger also gives you energy. So working out when you're really mad, um, you get that much more of a workout. And I, I you know, I, I'm not telling you to be an angry person at all, because if you're an angry person, you're not a happy person. And happiness is what it's all about, right, y'all? We want to be happy campers. So, um, but if you put that anger into something like working out, then you can be proud. Oh my gosh, look at this. I did 30 of these and I did 20 of those when yesterday I could only do 15 and 10. So I doubled it because I was so mad I didn't realize. And um, this is something that I do that helps me to work out harder. And I can put my excitement into that too, you know. Because I get this excited energy as well. So I don't consider the way I do things to be inappropriate as far as my emotions are concerned. And I don't think happiness is ever inappropriate if you're just a happy camper. Now, it might be inappropriate if somebody tells you their best friend died and you start laughing. Yeah, I agree with that. That's inappropriate responses. But there is nothing wrong with being happy just in general. And there is nothing wrong with getting excited about the things you're doing and able to get accomplished. There is nothing wrong with that. So somewhere along the line, there's been a miscommunication with my doc. And, you know, I told you last week that I had to go cold turkey off of the first medication I was given for the seizures because it did what? It stole my emotions and I need my emotions. It's how I've always done things. You know, I've always been a really emotional sort of person and I followed my heart. I followed those emotions and it's led me to better things every time. It leads me to good things. And I don't want to get rid of my emotions. But yet that first medication stole them. And I know that I'm really good at faking stuff. But who wants to go around and fake emotions all the time? Nobody. You know, I felt so dead inside. So 
I went cold turkey, and yesterday afternoon, I finally started feeling like myself, which was just amazing. I'm still not like 100% feeling like myself, but I'm, I'm almost there. And when I went to the doc on Monday, and it was an emergency appointment, so I didn't get to see my doctor. I thought I was going to see Dr. English, but I didn't get to see Dr. English. I saw his assistant, which under normal circumstances would have been fine. But there was some miscommunication, I think. And, and I, I just, I am, I'm not a happy camper at the moment with how that appointment went. So I'm going to have to stand up for myself. And this is something that we have to do as patients. No matter if we have MS or if we have one of a thousand other things going on, we have to stand up for ourselves. We have to make sure our voice is heard. We are the most important member of the team, of our health care team. We are the most important person in that health care team. So I was prescribed a new medicine to help with the seizures. And I need something for the seizures. And they have prescribed me something called triliptal. Triliptal? Triliptal? I'm not sure how you say it. And it's a generic name for oxcarbazone. Oxcarbazone. I don't know how you say these names. They're like a mile long, you know. And anyways, this medicine, when I was told about it, which I, by the way, let me back up a minute. I had a great time on the way down there. My son Cody drove us and we just, we had a blast. And um, I so appreciate him taking me, you know. But anyways, I get there to the doctor's office and they've got a new system, a new computer system for checking in. And they hand you the little tablet thing and the pen to push the buttons. And so I filled it out. And I'm sitting there beating on it with the pen because it wasn't registering that I hit it. And I got to the end of this thing and I was trying to hit the continue button. And I think I hit continue like twice, meaning to hit it just once. But it went thun thun instead of just thun. And um, the screen went blank. And I was like, oh, no. So I took the thing back up there and I said, did I break it? What is wrong? And the girl said, I don't know. Let me see. And she checked and she said, well, you, you got past the check-in part. So they had all that. And she says, yep, you broke it. And I was like, oh, no, I am so sorry. I'm sorry I broke it. I, you know, and I, I really was and I really thought I broke it. And um the the girls behind the desk all started cracking up because I didn't break it. I didn't break it at all. But they had me going there, you know. So anyways, then I get in to see the assistant. And she said that, you know, after I told her what had happened on the other medicine and the funky side effects that I was getting, which were just growing, 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 she said that she's going to give me this trilip. How did I say it? Tri 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 <laughs> Trileptol, which she tells me is for seizures and for bipolar disorder and for headaches. Oh, my gosh. I do not have bipolar disorder. Just because I get excited when I get excited and I'm happy when I'm happy, you know, this is not bipolar and if you look up what bipolar is, then you know that this is not bipolar. This is just me being me. And I don't have manic depression. I also do not have the manic energy, you know, like what you would see in someone who truly is bipolar. I don't have either end of that spectrum. And I not that I don't have days that I'm depressed, because I do. Everybody with MS does. I mean, we all do. It's just part of having MS is you're going to have these kinds of days. And then you have to pick yourself up and get yourself going again in some way. Which Twitter is great for that, because my friends help me laugh, you know. And um, so it has been great. But she tells me this, and I'm like, I just... 
I really don't want anything else that's going to mess with my mood. You know, my mood's not back. I don't feel myself and yet, you know, and this was last Monday. So I didn't feel like myself at all. And I, you know, I laughed with my son on the way down there and I had a good time. But it was a forced good time. It wasn't my natural good time or I would have been just laughing my butt off the whole way. And I'm sure that my kids can tell a difference, you know, when I am me and when I am not me. And uh, so I really don't want to take this medication. So I, I tell her I don't. And I said, can you please ask Dr. English about a medicine that's not going to affect my mood? Because I don't need something that's going to affect my mood. My mood is helpful. It's not hurtful. It is helpful. So um, she says she'll be right back. She comes back 10 minutes or so later. And she says, well, this is the first one on the list for you to try after that last one that I failed on. And this is what he really wants you to try and take. And I was getting nowhere. And she gave me these big, long words of explanations about the chemicals in your brain and what happens and all this stuff. And it was kind of whoosh over my head, you know. So I I didn't argue with her. You know, she's not my doc. She's just the assistant, which she has authority to do a lot of things, but not to pick your meds, you know. So um, I talked to her about my liver enzymes as well because she said they were really down into the very, very normal range last time, which didn't make any sense to me at all. So anyways, they redid that test and they came back elevated again like normal. So, um, you know, I had talked to her about that, but I really didn't want this triliptal or however you say it because of the mood part of it. And um, it's not that I want my headaches back either, but I'd rather have my headaches than to have no mood. So um, I don't want my mood evened out. So I sent a message to my doc the next day saying, I think my, my concerns fell on deaf ears. I think that made him angry. I'm sorry that I made him angry, but I felt like it did because I kept saying I don't need anything for my mood. And they kept insisting that, you know, this is what I should do because it helps stabilize your mood. Who wants to be even keel? Who wants to not feel anything? Well, I don't, and there's nothing wrong with feeling things. Now, if I was bipolar and having seizures, then this would be a great medicine for me to try. But I'm not, you know. So um, I'm very concerned about trying it. And so far, you know, my doc is still sticking to it, even though I think there's probably other medicines that I could take. But I'm not going to take this medicine. I'm going to be defiant again because I am the most important member of the team of physicians and nurses and assistants and all of this. In my health care, I am the most important member of my health care team. And I am not taking another mood-altering medication, period. No way. You know, um, and he's telling me to give it a try. Well, I'm not going to give it a try right now because I'm not back to me. And if I give it a try after I'm back to me and I'm not me after I take it, I'm going to quit taking it. So I, I, I just don't see this as being the solution. And I know that we're on a deadline because my next seizure, if they stay on the five months is due in March, and nobody wants to have a seizure, especially not like these. They're focal aware onset seizures. So I'm completely aware of what's going on, even though I'm seizing. And um, they're not fun, and it takes a long time to recover. I mean, the last one, it took me, you know, several weeks to recover just some things, just enough to get up and get started. So I don't want it to happen again, but I really don't want a mood altering medication. You know, it just, it, there's nothing wrong with my mood, y'all. So I don't want it. And I have to make sure 
that my doc understands that when I told him that I get excited, that that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be happy and excited. And I have a trip coming up um, in March, and I want to be me when I go on my trip, you know. I don't want to be a zombie. I don't want to be unfeeling or uncaring or any of that. I want to be me. So remember, remember that you are the most important person in your health care team. It's a team, but you're a part of it. And you're the most important part of it. And so when your doc or your nurse or whoever it is you speak to misunderstands what you tell them, then make sure that you stand up for yourself and have your voice heard. So right now, I'm still going kind of back and forth about this with Dr. English, and we'll see what happens when it happens. But for right now, I'm not going to take it because it's a mood-altering disease, and I am me. So like on the way back down, you know, from from his, we got in the elevator, and there were all these people already in the elevator. And I'm like, oh, have you got room for two more? And they said, yeah, we can squeeze two more in. You know, it might make a difference if we were going up. And I laughed at the guy, and I said, yeah. I said, but we're going down, so well, we get there a few seconds early, right? Yeah, and all these people start giggling because what hits my brain then pops out of my mouth. And that is just who I am. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. That doesn't mean my mood is wrong. That means I'm starting to be a little more like me. And, you know, I do have some control over what pops out of my mouth. But sometimes things pop out just because they pop out, you know. And that's that's not just MS. But MS has, has certainly enhanced that. And, um, oh my gosh, my time is up. But y'all, be insistent that your doc hears what you're actually saying and isn't jumping to conclusions about you where he's misunderstood what you said and then jumped off on some crazy tangent that really isn't true. Um, you know, that is so super important. And um, you have to, or I have to, I have found that as a group, we have to stand up and make our voices heard or sit down and make our voices heard. Either way, we have to make our voices heard so that we can be treated right. So like I said, my time is way past up. So it's time to go. I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening as I'm reeling back down and trying to get myself together here. Um, Till next time, smile big, smile often, laugh a whole, whole lot, and most importantly, love yourself. Bye.